Let's practice some of these friction problems. So in example one, we're trying to move a 105 kilogram sofa to a different place in the living room. It takes a force of 702 newtons to start it moving. That means that this is the static friction force because it is the force it takes to overcome the static friction that's holding it still. And we have that the mass is 105. It's asking what is the coefficient of static friction between the sofa and your living room floor? We know that the static friction equa equation is mu s, and that's that Greek symbol, times the normal force. Now this isn't the normal force, but we can get it pretty easily. Remember when you have a horizontal surface, there's my sofa. It's not moving in the vertical direction, so the force down is equal to the force up. And this is true in a horizontal situation. When we get to angled situations, we'll have to talk about those. So we can calculate the normal force by calculating the force due to gravity which is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So we can calculate our normal force. I'm not going to round yet because we're doing all multiplication and division. So to make my answer more accurate, I'm going to leave it as is. We'll do significant figures at the end. So now if we plug into our static friction, force equation, we have 702 newtons equals mu s times our normal force. So our coefficient of static friction is equal to 702 divided by 1029. And now we can run, round to significant figures. We have 3, 3, and 2. So we need to round to have two significant figures. And our coefficient of static friction between the sofa and the floor is 0.68. If you ever get a coefficient of static friction that's greater than 1, you've done something wrong in your calculations and you need to go back and double check. Because the frictional force is always going to be less than the force it would take to lift the object up. Let's try another example. So in this example, we have a girl pushing a 52 Newton sled with a force of 38 Newtons as she walks across a cement sidewalk at a constant speed. Now, this constant speed is important. This constant speed tells us that acceleration equals zero, which means that the net force equals zero which means the force we're pushing with is equal to the kinetic friction force because it's moving. So we know that she's pushing which means that her kinetic friction force is equal to 38 newtons. We know that the weight of the sled is 52 newtons and we said earlier that if we're on a horizontal surface the weight is equal to the normal for force. So what is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the sidewalk and the sled runners? And This equation is the exact same as the one we just used for static friction but with the S's replaced with K's so, 38 equals the coefficient times 52 newtons. So our coefficient is equal to 38 divided by 52. And we're going to round that to two significant figures. So we get 0 
Let's try one more. This one's a little bit harder, but it's the same principle and the same equation. So we have a block with a mass of 1.4 kilograms. So our mass is 1.4 kilograms. It's pushed with a force of 3.5 newtons across a rough surface. So, and I'm just going to label this push right now so that I know what it is. And it slows down with an acceleration of negative 1.25 meters per second squared. And this does mean that the direction it's moving in is positive because it's slowing down. And it's asking you what's the coefficient of kinetic friction. between the block and the rough surface. So one thing we can quickly and easily do is convert the mass to the normal because that is equal to gravity. So we do 1.4 times 9.8 and you don't have to show this work because we're going to do this calculation a million times and I personally am not going to round it. I like to keep as many digits as possible when it's reasonable. If it had 500 decimals, I'd round it. As long as I keep more than what I'm going to eventually round to, it's good. Can't round here to one significant figure and then make your answer have two. So let's talk about this situation. Because we have an acceleration, we have to think about the forces in the x direction. So I'm going to draw a quick free body diagram. I have my pushing force. and I have my friction force. Which of these forces is larger? It's the friction force because my acceleration is negative. This direction is positive. And remember that the net, force e the net force determines the direction of the acceleration. So this means that my F net is going this way. And we can calculate F net by doing the pushing force minus the friction force. Well, we know this one. We don't know this one. And we can't calculate it because we don't know this. But we can calculate the net force because remember the net force is what causes this acceleration right here. So our F net is equal to our mass, which we gave up here, times the acceleration. And you better keep that negative sign because it's important here and it influences direction. So 1.4 times 1.25 and we get negative 1.75 newtons. So now we can plug in over here and solve for the force due to friction. And we said our pushing force over here was 3.5. Now remember we're doing addition and subtraction here so don't make this into a division problem just because that's what used to doing in algebra. So we can subtract 3.5 from both sides and that gets us negative 5.25 and then we can cancel out both of these negatives It's fine because coefficient of static friction is a scalar quantity, so we don't need to worry about direction anymore. Now to calculate this last step, we use our friction equation. And we have calculated our normal force up here. So we say that 5.25 
newtons equals the coefficient of kinetic friction times 13.72. And so our coefficient is 5.25 divided by 13.72. And we have to talk about significant figures. If we go back and look, this one has 2, 2, and 3, and we use 9.8 here, so we're going to have two significant figures. It will be 0.38. Remember that coefficients are unitless because we do newtons divided by newtons. And I think the hardest part in this whole problem is this step right here. You've got to be able to visualize what's going on, what's adding up to that net force takes just a few seconds to scratch out a drawing. It's fine if you type in your work into the answers and you just want to scratch your drawings on a scrap piece of paper, but I really, really strongly suggest that you do it. It's not that hard in these linear motion ones, but next we're going to learn how to apply these situations when there's two directions going on and you're going to really need to be able to visualize the situation. Please practice some of the problems below and let me know if you have any questions.